Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. We're going to talk about one topic today, but one that is very important and about which there's a lot of information. A coronary calcium scan is a CT scan of the heart that is designed to detect and measure the amount of calcium in the arteries. The rationale for the test is that since calcification is a sign of atherosclerosis, the test can be used for early detection of heart disease. The scan is typically performed in a medical imaging facility or hospital and uses an electron beam CT or multi-detector CT machine. An Agatson score is determined that reflects the amount of calcium in the arteries. Zero is normal, and the higher the score, the more likely people are to have heart disease, according to advocates. Higher scores usually lead to more tests and potentially to interventions ranging from drugs to invasive procedure. The cost of the test is someplace between $600 and $3,000, and the fact that there's so much variability there is a little bit concerning, should be to all of us. And it's justified based on the idea, and we've heard this so many times, early detection can reduce the risk of events and, cancer and, and death. But there are problems with the test, starting with the way that coronary artery disease develops and the real causes of cardiac events like heart attacks and death. Plaques contain many constituents that include calcium fat, cholesterol, and just cellular debris. It's true that calcium hardens the arteries and that the presence of calcium can indicate that a person has coronary artery disease. However, heart attacks are not usually due to those hardened, stable, calcified plaques close to the heart. Those rarely rupture. Instead, they're due to the soft and vulnerable plaques located in the miles of blood vessels throughout the body. The scans don't detect these plaques or evaluate them and therefore really can't inform a patient of his or her real risk. Now, by the way, that's one of the limitations of bypass surgery is it bypasses the arteries close to the heart. It does nothing for the miles of arteries throughout your body that can be quite injured, inflamed, and have significant amounts of plaque. One research group determined that many patients who had a coronary artery score of zero, no calcium detected, had significant blockages and that the absence of coronary calcification does not exclude stenosis or the need for revascularization. They concluded, quote, total coronary occlusion frequently occurs in the absence of any detectable calcification, end of quote. Another research group concluded coronary calcium amount appears to be a weak predictor of coronary death and infarction. The rich and famous are not immune to being taken advantage of by the medical profession. According to cardiologist Dr. Rita Redberg, former President Barack Obama did not benefit when he had a calcium screening scan. According to an editorial by Dr. Redberg, quote, this screening test likely exposed Mr. Obama to a significant radiation, to significant radiation unnecessarily, increasing his risk of future cancer. A single electron beam CT scan can deliver 100 to 400 times more radiation than a traditional X-ray. In light of this radiation risk and the lack of proven benefit and low-risk persons, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends against this test in people such as Mr. Obama. In addition, the leading professional cardiology societies do not recommend coronary calcium screening. End of quote. That is what Dr. Rita Redberg af wrote after, Dr., uh, after Barack Obama had the tests himself. And, and of course, one of the things that the um, various medical groups and device and drug makers do is that they publicize when famous people have these things done because then it sends the message to the whole population, you ought to do this too. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, I went to their website to read what they had to say about it, finds no evidence that calcium screening for coronary heart disease is beneficial and recommends against the practice for both low-risk populations and people who are at increased risk. There really isn't anybody that benefits. Calcium screenings were given a D, and the task force wrote that false positive test results are likely to cause harms which can include unnecessary invasive procedures and over-treatment. The USPSTF concluded that the potential harms of routine screening for heart disease exceed the potential benefits if you're going to do calcium scans, for example. The authors of a recent paper published in um, a cardiovascular journal say that coronary artery calcium scans should be widely used, but then when I read the article, it seemed that the information in the article argued against this conclusion. The authors state that there currently is no evidence from randomized controlled trials showing that outcomes are better and that outcomes data won't be available anytime soon. 
the problem in proving efficacy, they say, is that the event rate is so low in the primary pre prevention population, which is people who haven't yet had a heart attack or an event, that an enormous number of patients would have to be followed for a very long time in order to quantify the benefits. So this is, since this is most likely prohibitive, the authors go on to say, they recommend instead the use of, quote, intermediate endpoints. Now, I have a couple of big issues with this approach. One is that one of the reasons why traditional medicine is so ineffective is the use of surrogate markers or intermediate markers, they're called various and different things, um, to evaluate the efficacy of drugs and procedures and surgeries and all kinds of things and tests. Um, and one of the reasons this is a problem is they don't necessarily indicate better outcomes. So in the cardiovascular uh, disease area, an example would be that taking Crestor, a stat, very popular statin drug, um, it does reduce cholesterol. It predictably does that, but it only reduces the risk of heart attack, stroke, or all-cause mortality by 1.2%. You get pretty blood work, but you don't really get different uh, long-term results. And of course, we see this in the cancer business where a treatment will shrink the tumor, but the patient doesn't really get prolonged life, which is really what treatment should be all about. So um, it, it's, it's, you know, another issue is the cost, which is related to this. If benefits of the test are limited to such a small population that it's hard to prove, I mean, it's highly unlikely that you're going to be able to justify the cost of the test. So you've got two problems. According to the authors of the study saying everybody shouldn't do it, it's going to be difficult to prove that everybody should do it because the type of study that would prove that it's useful can't be conducted, and um, it's, the cost is going to become an issue too. Additionally, there are potential harms which include an increased risk of cancer, and that's according to the National Heart, you know, Lung, and Blood Institute. Even traditional cardiologist Steve Nissen at the Cleveland Clinic argues against calcium scans because of the, of the risk of harms outweighing any benefits. Now, Dr. Nissen and I don't agree on a lot of things, and I have made some comments on this YouTube channel, in fact, that were quite critical of Dr. Nissen, but I have to give him credit here. He says that perfectly healthy people are getting these scans and this leads to over-treatment. Doctors say, well, you've got all this calcium in your coronaries, maybe we better do a heart catheterization or we should do a thallium scan and the next thing you know they're in the cath lab, sometimes even getting stents. That's a direct quote from Dr. Nissen. He goes on to say, I see patients continually in my clinic who've been harmed by getting an inappropriate CAC scan that leads to unnecessary procedures and it's just bad medicine. So even a very traditional medical doctor uh, is speaking out. Um, since CAC can't be justified based on outcomes, some argue instead that the screening is needed and one of the reasons is cardiovascular disease continues to be the leading cause of death in the United States and it hasn't really changed much over the years. So one of the advocates, researcher Alan Rosansky, said in a press release, by using imaging for screening, we can detect problems early on, which gives the patient an opportunity to make lifestyle changes to help avoid developing heart disease, such as improving nutrition, starting to exercise, or quitting smoking. We believe this will not only help improve and save lives, but that it can ultimately contribute to lower health costs since the earlier adoption of positive health habits can reduce patients' clinical risk and potentially eliminate the need for more costly interventions later on. Well, it seems to me that there are better ways to encourage patients to adopt better habits than an unreliable, expensive test for which there is no evidence that outcomes are improved and where the harms um, outweigh the benefits. And again, I'll point to Dr. Nissen, who to his credit agrees with this, saying, exposing people to radiation in order to motivate them, take a deep breath and think about that. He adds that conversations with patients about risk factors and prevention strategies are better and said, quote, I don't have to stick them in a calcium scanner and expose them to possibly fatal radiation in order to have that conversation, end of quote. So once again, I'm sure that there are probably subset populations that might benefit from something like this. And usually, Another thing that's wrong in medicine is that something is developed that actually helps a small group of people, but you can't really make a lot of money at it unless you get everybody to do it. And it may be that that's what's happened here, um, is that um, uh, there's a small subset that benefits from this, but it's definitely a failure in terms of changing health outcomes. We don't have any proof that it does. So if somebody recommends this to you, um, my advice would be to just say no. 
All right, that's all for today, and it's all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you next week with more news.